So welcome, welcome everyone. So, so good to see you and uh, to be together here virtually, alone together uh, in this very interesting time. So some of you have um, participated in events with each other and with me for uh, months or years or decades. Some of you joining for the very first time absolutely doesn't matter. Um, and some of you will be joining us on, on YouTube later on in, in perpetuity when, when we, we post the video. So for everyone, however you wound up here, great, great to have you on board. So we're going to, to do some meditation. I'm going to lead some meditation in just a minute. Uh, afterward, we'll be discussing some of the particularly interesting aspects of the time that we're living in and, and being a uh, someone who is in the process of trying to become more awake at this particular time. And it's, you know, this is really a great time for waking up. I mean, any time is a great time for waking up. Um, but in particular, um, I mean, so many people say, okay, I, I'd love to meditate. I know it's something good, but but I don't have the time. Someday I'll, I'll get the time. Well, now this is that time, right? That day has, has arrived. Uh, all our excuses are gone. We're, we, we're, we, now we have enforced sitting around. Um, and also the other thing that makes this an ideal time for waking up is that we all have a presenting problem now in our life. I mean, most of us had them already, but usually for people to kind of take seriously the whole, pro the whole process of waking up, of becoming more awake, more enlightened, usually there's got to be something going on. There's got to be something non-ideal, something that we wouldn't choose. And we're in this very interesting time where it's not just our individual things that are off kilter, but one great big thing that's off kilter for everyone. And that that uh, it's just a, a unique time in the history of the world that we're all facing this um, this same challenge and and facing the question how do I be okay in the face of this how can I find the place of okayness which we're all looking for all the time uh, with this thing going on. So we'll do some meditation, and then we'll do some talking. Oh, and don't let me forget, please, um, that uh, as advertised, we're going to be looking into some special meditative techniques for falling asleep, which seems to be a good idea these days. A, a number of people are having trouble sleeping soundly. Okay? We'll, we'll do that near the end so that I don't have people falling asleep in the middle of the session. Okay? So, please sit up comfortably. And what we're doing here is natural meditation. Natural meditation. Um, you know, there's the, the expression, no pain, no gain, which uh, uh, applies to many things, perhaps. But it doesn't apply to this. This is the one thing. The essence of natural meditation is that the idea of no pain, no gain, that there's, there's got to be some work, there's got to be some sweat equity to get some benefit out of this thing, is exactly wrong. It's 180 degrees wrong. I think uh, my slogan for this stuff should be no pain, no pain. Cool. Okay. So, um, don't work at this. And in fact, don't do anything I don't tell you to do. Very simple. Okay? So, we're sitting up comfortably. And uh, as our little um, on-ramp into the simplicity of natural meditation, 
Let's start this time. Those of you who were with me last time, you may remember our on-ramp was a deep sigh. <sighs> That's always great. But I want to do a, diff a different one uh, tonight, which is... Uh, okay, let's take a deep breath, please. Ah, uh, that's what's called a descending fifth, all right? So what you can do is on that upper note, think of, think of, just kind of feel yourself as that upper note, as if that's a little droplet, little isolated droplet, kind of unstable. It's gotten kicked out of the, the bathtub and it's, kind of suspended in the air above the bathtub and just feeling kind of unstable and insecure and unsafe. Ah, and then when we swoop down into the second note, ah, you as the little droplet just ah, fall back down into that nice warm tub. This happens to be an infinite tub. It, it goes, stretches all the way beyond all the horizons and you're just melting into that warm water. Okay, so once again, nice deep breath. Ah. And again, nice deep breath. Ah. And again, deep breath. Ah. And now we just sit with the eyes closed. And we don't do anything in particular. You're already sitting in your seat. And you might notice, notice whether sitting in your seat requires any effort. No, there's no work involved. In fact, you, prob you may have forgotten that you were sitting in a seat. You don't have to go, okay, sit in the seat. Now sit in the seat. No. The seat, the chair, the couch, the bed, the floor, whatever you're on, takes care of that. It holds you. Through the wonders of gravity, it holds all of your weight, every pound. So you can notice how every pound of you is held by the seat. So you're completely free of any work involved in sitting. You might notice that breathing is also going on all by itself. You don't have to think, okay, breathe in, okay, breathe out. It goes on without our thinking about it. So we're free. We're freed by the miracle of effortless, spontaneous breathing. And we can notice how the senses function all by themselves.
so you can hear this voice as it comes and goes. Whatever other sounds might present themselves to your hearing, perhaps traffic going by your house, voices from the other rooms, whatever's there. And of course, it doesn't matter what sounds you hear. What does matter is this beautiful effortlessness of hearing. We don't have to go, okay, now here, now here. No, it just happens. So we're completely free with regard to hearing. And we're completely free with regard to the other senses. Even with the eyes closed, we may experience subtle colors dancing behind the eyelids. We may experience physical sensations in this or that part of the body of being warm or cold, tight or loose, comfortable or in discomfort due to perhaps whatever's going on medically. And whatever it is, it goes on all by itself. We're completely freed from any effort, any responsibility, any managerial duties with regard to our spontaneous experiencing. And all we're doing here is pointing out the way our awareness works, the way it presents itself to us all the time. Regular, ordinary, everyday awareness. Only we're noticing it a little more clearly than usual. And for once, we're not trying to do anything about it. We're just resting in the middle of this effortless, spontaneous display of experience. Doesn't matter what comes up, doesn't matter what's there. Whatever's there, just rest aware. That's simple. Whatever's there, just rest aware. not trying to concentrate or focus on anything in particular. Not trying to be mindful. Not trying to keep track of anything or monitor anything. Not trying to transform our experience into something that we could call meditation. Just letting the experience be raw, uncooked. And not particularly paying much attention to, oh, now I'm experiencing this or now I'm experiencing that. Not trying to be vigilant. 
We're just kicking back. We're just resting and whatever happens to present itself in the screen of our awareness, fine, it's there and, and then it'll be gone, something else will be there. Doesn't matter what appears on the screen. Our concern here is with the screen itself. And this screen, this medium, this empty space within which the different experiences come and go is called awareness. It's also called I. I experience my phone ringing. I experience the feeling of anxiety or tranquility, whatever comes and goes, whatever's crossing the screen doesn't matter. We just rest in this I, this I aware, this screen. which is perfectly empty by nature, even when it's full of stuff. The nature of the screen, the nature of awareness is inherently empty. That's what allows it to display all the various sense perceptions, the thoughts, the feelings. And that's why any thoughts or feelings that happen to cross the screen, fine, they're just like colors behind our eyelids or sounds from the street. They're not important. Thoughts are pretty much just like sounds, only a little quieter. Just as it doesn't matter whether a sound that we hear is a truck or a motorcycle, it doesn't matter whether a thought we have is about this thing or that thing, so-called positive thoughts or so-called negative thoughts, they're all just blips on the screen. And nothing damages the screen or improves the screen. So we don't have to be concerned with managing thoughts or trying to keep them out or, oh, now I'm having this emotion or that emotion, so it's a problem. For right now, nothing that appears is a problem. Anything that appears is another blip on the screen, which by nature is also is always empty. And by the way, this screen has no edges, no shape, no size. It's 
like open space. If you've been having a thought of a picture of a computer screen, that's just another thought. The awareness itself is like open space. It's like nothing at all. But it's the room, the uh, aware room, the aware space in which everything is experienced without effort. So we just rest as that space, which is I, you, the experiencer. Just relax back into yourself, open, free, space-like awareness. And whatever comes and goes within it doesn't matter. It's perfect. Just rest as awareness, that simple. This awareness, never have to look for it anywhere. It's always right here. Just relax back into it. If different feelings come along, feelings of anxiety or happiness or fatigue or joy, any kind of feeling, we can notice that they're called feelings because they feel a certain way. 
It's just a sensation in the body. This sensation or that sensation. It's like this sound from the street or that sound from the street. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what you feel. For now, that's just another blip on the screen. So any feelings that come along, don't have to evaluate them, hold on to them, push them away. Just relax back into this open, empty space of awareness. And whatever feelings or anything else come and go, we let them come and go. Not paying a lot of attention to them. At any point, if you feel, oh, gee, I've been caught up in this long thought story, that doesn't matter. Just relax your grip on it. Relax your grip on it, whatever it is. You're caught up in a feeling, caught up in a whatever. Whatever it is, don't try to get rid of it or analyze it. Just relax your grip on it and relax back into yourself. Relax back into this free, open, empty space of awareness. And rest in that. Melt into that. Melt into yourself. completely marinate in this open, empty awareness, which is always right here, which is always you.
Now, keep the eyes closed and take a couple of minutes to gently start bringing the body back to a more active state. You might want to start by wiggling your fingers or your toes. Maybe shift a little in your seat. Maybe stretch your limbs, twist your trunk, or maybe roll your neck around a little. Just get the body moving a little bit again. Sometimes it feels good to squeeze your hands together, massage your scalp a little bit. So the body can be resting very deeply during meditation, so we want to just ease it back to the active state. And then when the body feels ready, just slowly start to crack the eyelids open. You can take your time. Okay. If you're still opening your eyes, that's fine. Take your time. Sometimes it takes quite a while. How are people doing? Thumbs up? Thumbs down? Thumbs sideways? Um, any questions? Uh, oh, does is, is everyone know where the, um, the feature is where you can raise your hand? Um, not not raise your hand. They have not raise your hand physically, but there's a. Actually, I'm going to unmute Yafa so she can tell you how to raise your hand. Uh, okay. So at the bottom of the screen, most screens, there's a icon for participants, and if you click on that, you'll see a list on the side of your screen that has all the names of people. But then at the bottom, there's a few little icons and one of them is blue and it says raise hand. So you can click on that if you want the host to see your hand. Not everyone will see that hand, but he will. Yeah. Okay. And if for some reason you can't find that, I think probably the 
little thumbs up icon probably would work too that's at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, okay, so thank you, Yafa. So for now, let's use the thumbs up only for as the equivalent of raising your hand if you can't find the, the raising hand, okay? By the way, this is the third Zoom session that I've run, so I'm still getting up to speed with these things. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Curtis, uh, you, I, I wanna take questions first about the meditation itself, questions or comments about the meditation itself. Uh, so, so Curtis, did you want to uh, ask or say something? Me, uh, Dean? Yes. Good, yeah. Very similar to your book, I, which I read a couple, I wasn't sure whether you saw me here. I read a couple of years ago and I emailed you a couple of times. I, I live in Toronto, Canada, and we discussed some things. I run the Etobicoke Jazz Festival and uh, Jazz oh, Festival. Oh, yeah. Yes, you yes, yes. Jazz musician. We got back and forth a little bit on that. You're the trumpet player. Oh, I'm a drummer, actually. But we talked drummer. we talked a little bit about this. And as I say, I run that festival. And you, you said you were a saxophone player at one particular point. Yeah. We were talking about the Zen kind of thing of playing music and, and, and doing something similar to this. So mm -hmm. I'm glad part, I'm a part of this. I missed Great. a bit because a couple of people phoned. But my buddy downstairs, who's a great piano player, just took a little peek at this and said, we'll, we'll be back on Thursday. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Glad to meet you. But very, very pleased to meet you. And, and uh and uh, I've always liked this vibe, but now we see, as I see you, I can see why, you know. Thank you. Great, thank you. And thank all those you. other people, and, and those that really know this man, uh, you, you're way ahead of me, but I'm glad I'm uh, part of this team now. <laughs> well, welcome, that's so great. So there is someone else out there that's corresponded with me who's a jazz trumpeter. Oh, uh, cool. So we got your piano player. We're, we're close to having a, a whole oh, combo here. Cool. Band now, I'm telling you, it's working. <laughs> yeah. By the way, about my saxophone playing, let me just mention my father, who was a classical musician, he was an oboist. He, I remember him once saying, you know, the saxophone is a very easy instrument to play badly. That's that. And, and, and I was living proof of that. <laughs> That's okay. It's all right. You Good. wouldn't know unless you try, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Right, but I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, beautiful, absolutely, it's what it's about. Thank you. Right. So, um, uh, anyone with the hand up? Yes, uh, Len, you have a question or a comment? No, actually, I was experimenting with putting the hand up, and I didn't know how to put it down again. I'm sorry uh, to, uh, no, the okay. meditation was good. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, great. Okay, okay. Uh, so is everyone got the gets the simplicity of this thing. I mean, there there's yeah. just really nothing to it, and the the main thing is just remembering that there's nothing to it. So that when you find yourself saying, "Oh well, maybe I could improve th this by just pushing that thought away," or maybe if I could just have this try to take this feeling which is not very pleasant or whatever turn it to a more just some way we're so in the habit of working at things that it, it's understandable that there's a tendency to bring our habit of working into meditation but meditation as we call it natural meditation is exactly the one thing where it's non-work it's non-work. Uh, in a sense, that's what makes it so important. It has to balance out all that work that we do on, with everything else in our lives. The, everything else is doing, various forms of doing. This is the one thing that's, it's not doing, it's just being. It's just being. Uh, now, usually we start with some kind of on-ramp, whether it's a deep sigh or, oh, what we did this time was singing what uh, Curtis and the other musicians will recognize as a descending fifth. Okay. <laughs> uh, and this is a really good one. I like this one a lot. Uh, you can use this as the on-ramp into your meditation. You can use it also, just by the way, um, you can, I do this in the shower every morning. It's really good for your voice. Um, 
if, if you want your voice to sound, uh, to, to, to not get old and cracked sounding and still sound mellow and, and pleasant for other people to listen to, this is the best exercise that I know. Um, the way you can remember, let's see, how am I going to, uh, how, how, how do you remember that? Some of you know this one from church. Amen. That's a descending fifth. Some of you know it from the ballpark. Oh, say, can you see? But not in Canada. Ah, oh, say. And some of you know it from TV. Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. Ah. And if you really want to see how powerful this thing is for your voice and for your consciousness, fool around, find what is the lowest note that you can sing comfortably at full volume. Uh, so for me, uh, uh, there, uh, and then, so we find that note and then go up five steps. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, now for you, it may be one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Ah, uh, okay, play around with it. And take a deep breath, you take a deep breath, and then ah. Uh, and that's a little mini meditation in itself. You can do that anyway, you do that at a, at a red light. Do that when you're, um, gee, Anyone encountered any anxiety lately? Hmm. Okay. So here's the thing. Oh, you don't have to sit down. You don't have to close your eyes. You just, just anywhere you are, whatever's going on, you're reading the, you know, the 17th article today about, you know, the, the stuff going on and you're starting to feel something. Okay. Ah, just, you know, just take a moment, take a deep breath. Ah, like that little droplet levitating, suspended in the air, and then <laughs> dropping and melting into that tub. And in fact, if you get familiar enough with that one, you can do it mentally. You don't even have to do it out loud. If you're, you're in a situation, you're talking to someone on the phone, whatever, you're feeling it's not going to be cool to do that out loud, you just... You can do it internally. Okay, so, you know, as I was saying before the meditation, we're in this wonderful time now when all our excuses for, uh, for not practicing are gone. We've got time, we've got motivation, ideal time to do some meditation practice. So what's really great is, is, is do this every day. Sit down for a little while, doesn't have to be real long, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Don't worry about the time. Don't worry about the time. Probably you don't have anywhere you got to get to. If you do, great, set a little timer. But otherwise, don't worry about the time. Just meditate for a while. You know, all the things that we really love doing, we forget about the time. Yaf and I went for a walk on the beach the other day, carefully avoiding any other pedestrians. And, uh, but, you know, you walk on the beach, you don't go, okay, how long have we been walking? Have we, have we clocked enough beach minutes to be achieving total mellowness? You, you don't know. You just, ah, walking on the beach. So same way. Do some little on-ramp exercise, maybe the descending fifths or the sighing or gazing at a spot on the floor, or gazing into the eyes of of a person you love or a photograph or something, and then just close the eyes. And, and if you, you only remember three words, rest as awareness, All right? All this stuff that we're aware of comes and goes, like blips coming and going on the screen, like breezes and clouds and weather coming and going in the sky. The screen is not affected by any of the stuff that comes and goes. The sky is not affected by any of the weather. It's just open space, just pure reflective capacity, pure awareness. And we just 
rest as awareness. And, and we don't have to look for awareness. It's always right here. How, if you find yourself looking, it's, you know, you're like a, like a, like a wave looking, wait, 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 where, where's that ocean I've been hearing about? You're in it. You are it. Just right here, wherever you are. And don't look for it to look like anything. You can't see awareness. It has no color, no shape. But it's where all your seeing has been taking place, where you've been seeing from every moment of your life. You can't hear awareness. It doesn't have a sound. But it's where you've been hearing from all your life. We can't even think about awareness <laughs> without running into some, you know, questions and paradoxes. But it's where you've been thinking from all your life. It's where all these thoughts are taking place. So do a little sit, comfort, sit up comfortably. If you become uncomfortable during the time, then shift. Get comfortable again. If your nose itches, scratch it. If you're falling asleep, great, fall asleep. Congratulations. And whatever comes and goes, comes and goes, rest is awareness. And then take your time coming out. That's simple. And we just keep doing this every day, every day. These days, you may want to do it a couple of times a day. Terrific. You know, make hay while the sun shines. Okay. So any questions or comments about, first, about the meditation? Or about anything else, about life during, what's the, uh, the great talking heads song? Life during wartime. Yaf, I'm going to unmute you here. There we go. Yes, Yafa. Um, just wondering if you could explain how being aware of this awareness helps us in this difficult situation. Oh, or yeah. Any that. difficult situation. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that. In other words, so what? Right. <laughs> right. Awareness is by nature empty, open, always here where everything is taking place. So what? Thank you very much. She's always there with the right thing. That's great. Um, so what? Well, those of you who've been practicing this for a while, you, you know, so what? So by nature, we're always looking for peace. We're always looking for happiness. We're always looking for fulfillment. These are actually different words for the same thing. We're looking for home. You know, we're like, uh, like Dorothy in, in The Wizard of Oz. We're just trying to get home. And we keep not finding it because we keep looking for it in the things that come and go. We keep looking for it in the blips on the screen. Like, where can I find something stable? Where can I find something I can rely on? Where can I find something that I can completely rest in? It will never change. It will never desert me. And we keep looking for it everywhere else. We keep looking for it in the things we're aware of, in people, in experiences. We finally find our favorite restaurant. Oh, man, I've been going to that sushi restaurant for 25 years. The, they, they greet me when I walk in. It's great. The, the sushi is always the freshest. It's, it's the best. And, that, and that's great. And it doesn't mean that we have to stop enjoying that. We look for permanence. We look for stability and happiness within our relationships. Of course, we make them as good and stable and happy as we can. But by nature, all that stuff is changing. All that stuff is ultimately uncontrollable. And it's in a time like this, you know, life during wartime, life during, during epidemic, that we really become aware, oh, gee, all the things I thought I could depend on, hmm, maybe they're really, I knew it abstractly, I knew it philosophically, now, you know, I'm starting to see it, it's really being driven home to me that all of this stuff can be taken away. None of it is, is guaranteed. And so it really behooves us to 
if we can really find a place that turns out it's, okay, little screen, don't try to hold on to this blip. This blip is moving. That blip is, they're all going to go away. They're all going to change. But the one thing that doesn't change, that doesn't go away, is the screen itself. And it turns out that one other important aspect of the screen is that, okay, it's by its nature, it's empty, it has no shape, it has no size, it has no nothing. But as my teacher Maharishi Mahesh Yogi put it, it's just nothing, but there's something very good about it. And that's why even people practicing with us for the first time here tonight, there is something you sink back into that. And maybe at the end, you notice, gee, I don't feel like opening my eyes. Or maybe you felt like, gee, I really feel mellow now. I really feel, you know, I really feel expansive. Maybe you're not quite sure, but yeah, somehow I feel a little more relaxed. We, we, we're going to experience that with various degrees of clarity. Long term, what happens, you keep doing this day after day, the clarity grows. More and more, the, that just nothing but something very good about it, what in Indian philosophy is called ananda, bliss, the happiness we were looking for everywhere else. More and more, we realize, oh, it was here all along. I, I've been aware all along, but I was not aware of awareness. The awareness, like a little flashlight, you know, uh, um, pointing outwards at everything else, lighting up this object, this object. Now the light rests within itself, and it finds that its nature is light. Its nature is mm -hmm, good. It's the happiness. It's the yum that I was looking for everywhere else. It's what my Dutch relatives called call lekker nix, delicious nothing. Delicious nothing. And that takes the pressure off of everything else. Then everything else is, and it happens incrementally, incrementally over the days and weeks and months of practicing. As those of you who've been practicing for a while know, more and more that comes to the foreground, that we're living from that place of, ah, oh, we're no longer, you know, before that, human beings, are, we're, we're, we have a, 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 a need mentality. Like, you know, we're like little Oliver Twist with our little empty bowl. Please, sir, I want some more. And, and, and really, every moment, every moment, every experience, every interchange with other people, we're looking for our little bowl to, to get filled with it. Now, what happens, and it happens gradually, incrementally, is that it's as if our bowl gets filled. And then we're still interacting with people. We're still, you know, we're not just sitting in a cave. We're kind of sitting in a cave now these days. But we can continue to be active in all the same ways. But more and more, now it's, it's our cup runneth over. And I'm sure you've known people like that. Some people that just everything, you know, they're just notably, dramatically, just needy, needy in everything they do. And some people just being around them is like, ooh, just like, you know, you can, it's like, let me come up to the fire and get warm from it. So what does this do for us? Getting back to Yafa's question. Actually, this has all been Yafa's question. What does it do for us? It makes us that kind of person. Person who is just happy or content, right, is maybe a, a better word. Content naturally, spontaneously within ourselves for no particular reason. And that contentment more and more just spills over into everything we do. So everything more and more becomes an expression of that. And it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, it, it, it's in some cheesy way, okay, now I'm, I'm going to be generous and loving to you and hello, you know. Uh, it's like the sun doesn't have to go, okay, little puddle, now I'm going to shine on you. And okay, ocean, now I'm going to shine on you. And okay, teacup, now I'm going to shine on you. The sun is just sitting back, relaxing, being the sun. And by its nature, it, it shines everywhere. And then, you know, there's byproducts. There, there's there's um, uh, um, side effects of this. 
which is that the mind becomes clearer. I've been talking about this in what sounds like kind of abstract philosophical terms, but it's completely neurological as well. Um, and there's been, you know, decades of research now showing that the mental processes become sharper, that um, what we think of as negative emotions, things like tension and anxiety uh, and rigidity become lessened, things like sense of humor, flexibility, all those good things uh, are enhanced. So what does this stuff do for us? Makes everything better, <laughs> right? The old, it's the old, the old uh, um, uh, commercial, things go better with Coke, right? Everything goes better with natural meditation. Okay, any other questions or comments from anyone? You can raise your hand or hit the thumbs up. Everybody's good? Ah, uh, Esther, hang on, I'm gonna unmute you. Takes a few moments to unmute you. Okay, yeah, Esther? Did my hand show up? Yes. Oh, okay. Did you want it to? Uh yeah, yeah, okay. yes, because I tried earlier as well, but nothing happened, so I was happy to listen. Yeah, it's, that's because I was busy talking. Right. <laughs> so um, this time, and mm -hmm. I'm still feeling it right now, mm -hmm. I felt as if there's a deep cavern under me, like I'm in a huge vat going downwards, the, the empty space, mm -hmm. like into an endless bottomless space. Mm -hmm. And I, I experienced it until now, that space. I can still imagine it as I'm talking to you about that. It's very interesting. Um, I was deeply in there. And also the beginning of that mantra or the sound is the same as that song, someday when I'm awfully low and the weather's cold, I will feel the glow. Yeah? the way you look tonight right. and it's actually a lovely song and it's got that exact tone in exactly the right levels i'm a musician too so I'm yes a yeah that's a that's a beautiful song thank you I, I love that song the irony of course is that the lyrics of that song have completely to do with everything that we that i've been talking about for the last 10 minutes everything well, i've been saying because it's exactly what we're always trying to do. We're, you know, we, you, you have that moment with your lover, your spouse, your partner. Oh, this is it. You're so beautiful. Or maybe it's with your, with oh, this bowl of ice cream is just the best. Or, I, uh, you know, we, uh, Yafa and I were up north uh, uh, a, a month or two ago, uh, just before all this stuff hit. Uh, visiting with uh, with my my daughter and and her husband and and uh, I have a grandson there who's four years old, and he's just so adorable now, and I and I said to my daughter, oh can we just just keep him like this? This is the, he's at peak adorability, and she said, yeah I know what you mean, but you know what? That's what I've felt at every step along the way. So well, you know, there's a saying, when your children are small, you wish you could eat them. And when yeah. they're big, you wish you had. <laughs> uh, yeah. They are adorable. Yeah. No, y Yaffa says that all the time, like he's so delicious. <laughs> and, and, and it's true. But, 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 and of course, yes, enjoy all these things to the maximum. That's, that's, we, there's no need to deny any of this, but also do the other. Fall within ourselves, this so-called meditation, which is really just falling back into yourself, falling back, withdrawing our primary attention from all the objects of awareness and falling back into awareness itself. And then more and more, we just discover that the inherent, the innate nature of awareness is exactly that quality that we've been looking for in all the, un, the unstable objects. Your grandkids are going to grow up. Your kittens are going to become cats. Your favorite sushi restaurant is going to change shape, ah. and it's going to be disappointing. 
you know, you're, 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 you're having a good hair day tomorrow, today, tomorrow. Hey, what happened to my hairline there? You know, uh, that's just the, the, the nature of the beast. And all the great sages and spiritual teachers say this, you know, don't build your house on the sand, build it on the solid rock. What were they talking about? The solid rock is, is, is the least solid thing there is. It's the thing that's like open space. So, by the way, I have a theory that all those love songs, like The Way You Look Tonight and, and you know, all, all of them. Give them the uh, in love which are yeah. right which are which are so kind of crazy and romantic and 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 lovely but completely unrealistic when the way we usually think about them about other people when we realize that they're actually addressed to the infinite they make perfect sense mm. then they they become literally true you know that it's possible that that sound is so special that that's why that song is so special. Mm -hmm. What yeah. came that ah uh, that descending fifth <laughs> neurologically that's the that is see musically the musicians here know this the the fifth the five one two three four five ah uh, <laughs> that's the point of maximum suspension it's the farthest away you can get from the bass note. Mm -hmm before you start getting closer to that bass note in the next octave. Mm -hmm. Okay. So but then it's, the uplifting. Yeah. Right. If I were more musicologically a suit, I can hear it. I can, everything you're singing, the you know, the 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 evolving, the opening up of the uh, of uh, really, I mean, that's why music is so powerful. It, it's really uh, an unfolding of consciousness. Um, yeah. But let's let's just for now stick to this one thing, which yeah. I can talk about, and which yeah. is handy to use. Ah, uh, so ah, uh, well, that's the maximum distance, the point of maximum tension, and then as it swoops down into. Ah, uh, that's complete letting go. And that's why it shows up in Amen. Oh, say, can you see? Yeah. By the way, during the Civil War, we had on one side people singing, Oh, say. And on the other side, we had people singing, I wish I was in the land of cotton. It's the same, right? They're killing each other, singing the same interval because they were looking for the same thing. They were looking for home, looking for infinite okayness, what everyone's looking for all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I want to move on because I promised to talk about sleep techniques and I can see somehow the time is, is going away. By the way, if you have a, an, a, a burning question and it doesn't get answered here because we didn't get to you or you couldn't figure out how to raise your hand or something uh send me an email and 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 we'll we'll address it in the next session next session where that where you're there okay uh and i'm dean at dean um so uh i want to read you uh or not read you but uh some of you have this book Fear less, living beyond fear, anxiety, anger, and addiction. I could have kept going. We ran out of space on the cover. Loneliness, depression, guilt, shame, blah, 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 you know, all the usual suspects. Um, and I have a chapter there about uh, meditating into sleep. Um, so if you're having trouble sleeping, uh, I just want to point out a couple of highlights from here. The first thing that I point out is sleeping is not necessarily 100% necessary. That was a little awkward, but you get the idea. Um, the, those of you who are, and, and by the way, I come from a, a long line of insomniacs on both sides of my family. So my natural, constitutionally, I'm an insomniac. So I've had to do extensive personal research in this area. So, so my bad luck is your good luck. I've had to, you know, do the field research. Um, 
And one of the key things is that if, if you do tend to have problems sleeping, then it can be a vicious circle, right? You can't sleep because you have anxiety, then you have anxiety that you're not going to sleep, and then, you know, round and round and round and round. It's useful to know that it's not 100% necessary to sleep, that what we really want is just that place of repose, that place of the mind resting. We tend to identify the place of the mind deeply resting with sleep, but now we've discovered another place where the mind can rest deeply. And that is in, in, medita in the meditative situation. So for some people, just doing this natural meditation we've been doing here, if you can't sleep, sit up in bed or lie on your back and do that. Some people will find that that tends to make them more awake, you know, nice and alert and, and happy. But, but uh, uh, um, so you might want to do some others. One of them, I think we did this last time, which you can do any time to mellow out, is breathing through your feet. So some people have not done this with us before. So let's, let's do this now. Very simple. Put your attention. Notice the, bottom, the soles of your feet. And now your next breath as you breathe in. Just imagine you're breathing in through the soles of your feet. And as you breathe out, imagine you're breathing out through the soles of your feet. Breathing in through the soles of your feet. Breathing out through the soles of your feet. Breathing in through the soles of your feet. Breathing out through the soles of your feet. Okay, and done. Anyone notice you feel a little mellowed out from that? So this you can do anytime. You can do again when you're reading too much news, when you're you're um, at the red light when you're, um, or you can do it for falling asleep at night. Just keep, then the mind wanders off to something else going round and round about your worries or something. And then you remember, oh yeah, just gently come back. Don't try to push the other stuff away. Doesn't matter if the other thoughts are there along, any of these, it's the same principle. The thoughts are there along with it. The emotions are there along with it. Fine. We don't try to control them. Don't try to push them away. Just breathing in and out through the soles of your feet. Now, here's another one you can do that's especially good at the time of, of going to bed. Um, some of you, if you've, especially if you've, you've been doing uh, certain yogic uh, studies, uh, you may know that in the yogic teachings, there's two breath streams. The, the, breath, stream, the breath stream that goes through the left nostril is considered to be the um, uh, what's called the lunar breath, and the right nostril is the solar breath. Okay, um, or they'll say warming and cooling. They'll say female and male. They'll say uh, pacifying and arousing. And there's all kinds of what's called pranayama, the different ways of manipulating the breathing that are based on, on doing various, and there's hundreds of them literally uh, for, for dealing with that, using that fact, that polarity of the, the cooling, pacifying breath through the left and the warming, arousing breath through the right. So a simple one you can do at bedtime is as you're lying there, cut, you, with your thumb, cover up your right nostril, the thumb of your right hand, cover up your right nostril and simply breathe in through the left nostril, and then switch with, with your um, middle finger or third and fourth finger, close the left, open the right, and then breathe out through the right nostril. And then again, switch, breathing in through the left, and switch out through the right. And in through the left. and out through the right. Now, as you continue this, you may find naturally you t there's a tendency for the breath to lengthen. So 
So without forcing it or straining it, just sort of favor, easily favor, letting the breath get longer, letting the, the in-breath get longer and letting the out-breath get even longer. Um, th there have been studies showing that people who are really calm, the out-breath tends to be about half again as long as the in-breath. So that if your in-breath is, let's say, six seconds, your out-breath would be around nine seconds or anywhere up to 12 seconds, about 150% to 200%. Now, don't get into, oh, I'm timing it with the time, you know, and oh, how long is it getting, right? That, that's going to be counterproductive if that becomes another thing to be, you know, anxious and finicky about. But just to very, the attitude is the whole thing on all of this stuff, the spirit in which you go into it, just very easily. Oh, just let that left breath, in breath, get longer and more luxurious. And oh, just enjoying each moment of it coming in. And then the out breath through the right, even more long. Just, oh. Right? So I think some of you will find that very useful. Any questions about that? Anybody, any, any hands? Uh, okay. What else did I have here? Ah, yes. So just one more, I've got about five or six of them in this chapter, but just one more for now. Um, Cause it's based on the, the, the singing, the descending fifth that we did before. And I mentioned when you've worked with it for a while so that you just know that descending fifth, you know what it sounds like, what it feels like, that you can do it mentally. Now, one of the nice advantages of doing it mentally internally, and you can do this as you're lying there in the dark, is that you're not limited by the range of your voice. Right? And you can start just imagining hearing a descending fifth that's really low, really way down there. And, and you know, lower, uh, I think we may have been, this may have come up in our session here last week. Um, the, uh, the cosmologists, the astrophysicists have determined the lowest, not only the lowest sound in existence, but the lowest sound that can be existence can be in existence. It's like the base note of the universe. And it's a B flat. <laughs> For some reason, the math of it is, it's a B flat, I think it's 87 octaves below middle C on the piano. And I just, I just love trying to imagine that. Um, but you, 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 know, you can just, if this is something that calls you, just as you're lying there in bed, falling asleep. And, and by the way, this stuff's not for insomniacs only. Anyone can do this stuff because it really is just a, a very lovely, graceful um, uh, way to fall asleep, any of these, these techniques. So you could just be internally resonating with the descending fifth, maybe start it you know, up somewhere in your vocal range and then try it lower, try it lower. And if you find that confusing or something, then fine, do something else. But if it, and that's the principle with all of this stuff. You know, I, I always try to give people a few tools in their toolkit, use what works for you. The main tool, the one thing that really anyone can do is this natural meditation because it's our nature to fall back into ourselves. The mind is always looking, as I said before, for that peace, that happiness, that contentment. And what makes this meditation work is that we allow that natural tendency to take over. We just, rather than trying to flatten out all the waves on the surface of the ocean, we let the gravity pull us down we only have to go down a foot or two and discover that, oh, the water is quiet down here in the depths of the ocean all the time. I don't have to 
flatten out all the waves on the surface. I don't have to manage or control or, or restrict the, or repress the emotions, the thoughts, the perceptions, all the stuff on the surface. That can be going on. I just, you know, just settle down here and, oh, this is, up here is thoughts, emotions, perceptions. Down here is awareness, which by its nature is open, empty, free, bliss. So the mind is naturally attracted to that. So that's why when we just do a little on-ramp activity of some kind, something simple for a couple of minutes, and then just, just rest in the awareness that's there, rest in that space, letting stuff come and go, whatever the settling that takes place, which is both mental and physiological, takes place spontaneously. Nothing we have to do about it. Okay, anything else? Any other questions or I want to take a look at I made a note to myself something else I wanted to talk about. Ah, yes, okay. Um, just before we go, I want to talk a little bit about the sweet spot, or as it's called in in Buddhist philosophy, the middle way, the middle way. The time that we're in is a perfect opportunity to practice the middle way. All right. So, um, how did I put this? Ah, yes, the middle way between staying informed and obsessing. Right? Can you hear that? The middle way, it's, the, it's one thing, okay, if obviously there's a lot of important information coming out and it's changing every day and then there's filtering what's real, reliable information and what's not. And then on the other hand, there's, there's, there's a place where we go beyond that where we're just obsessing, letting ourselves become overwhelmed with that. Okay, we don't want to be just flaky and, oh, I'm not going to deal, whatever. Um, you know, like the knucklehead we saw in, at the beach in Florida saying, at the end of the day, nothing's going to stop me from partying, right? We're going kind to of find that, that middle way, find that sweet spot between obsessing and stay, staying informed. Um, and it's the same thing with any emotional responses we might have to what's going on right now or to what's going on anytime. You know, on the one hand, there's repressing your emotions. Oh, no, I have to be stoic. I have to, that eh, doesn't work. On the other hand, it's like wallowing in it. There's a sweet spot. There's a middle way somewhere of just, okay, here's my feelings. There they are. They're part of what's going on. Sometimes they might be very strong. I, this llama that I used to study with, this llama from England, from Wales, actually, um, someone was asking about dealing with powerful emotions. And, you know, oh, but I'm trying to be spiritual. I'm trying to be meditative. I don't feel like I should be caught up in anxiety or this or that. And he said, no, 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 no. He said three words, let it flood. Let it flood, but not flood all over other people. That's bad manners. So if you're feeling, you know, really overwhelmed with what you do is, he said, you go into a room, by yourself with a lot of pillows <laughs> and, you know, if necessary, you know, pound the pillows, knock yourself against the, the, the padded wall, whatever it is, let it flood because this trying to repress the emotions just is, is what makes them toxic. There's actually nothing wrong with having any emotion. What makes it feel toxic is our attempt to repress it. And then it feels weird, and re and then we feel even more. It's a it's a it's a vicious circle. Even more, we feel that we have to repress it. So we don't want to wallow in it, but not repress it. Just okay. Here it is. It's part of what's going on. And also, all, it's always useful to notice they're called feelings because they feel a certain way in the body. They're sensations. And when you go into the room to let it flood, just notice that sensation. Let it happen. Let it take. However much time. Now, the feeling is different from the thoughts that are associated with it. Okay? 
Like if you're walking down the sidewalk and I jump out of the alley and go, boo, there's going to be a feeling of startledness. And then perhaps a moment later, there's the thought, oh, I'm startled because Dean did that. And oh, Dean is such a jerk and blah, blah, blah. OK. And you say, oh, I feel that Dean is such a jerk. That's not actually a feeling. That's a thought. It's a thought that's associated with a, a powerful feeling. And it's useful to distinguish between them. There's nothing you have to do about this except notice the distinction. And that when we're going into the room and letting it flood, whatever thoughts are there about situations, they're going to be there. And whatever feelings, sensations are there, they're going to be there. And just let them take their time, let it flood. And it's like, it's like letting the little bud open up, blossom, and then, you know, falls, the, 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 the petals fall to the ground, and that process is done. Okay, so maybe this, this will be useful to some people. All right. So um, it is time for us to adjourn. So um, I want to, um, just before we close, again, any answer, unanswered questions, urgent questions, anything, never hesitate to email me, dean at deanslider.com. And um, we'll be doing this again. Uh, everyone, of course, is invited this Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern. And my favorite prayer, May all beings everywhere find the true happiness, the unshakable happiness, the happiness which is their own overlooked nature, and thus may peace prevail everywhere. And in Sanskrit, feel free to sing along if you know it. Loka samasta Suki no Bhavantu Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. 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 Thank Okay. okay. Good. Bye, okay. everybody. I'll, I'll be there bye -bye. on Thursday. Okay, great. Bye, Kevin. <laughs> bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye, Esther. Bye-bye.